Okay, hello. I am here because Dario could not come here. And in this talk, I would like to present the results of our studies uh, on the chemical profile of the urban aerosol in the metropolitan area of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Um, Uh, this talk is organized um, as follows. Firstly, a graphical view of both the city of Buenos Aires and its aerosols. Um, and later I will concentrate on some chemical markers of our interest. The results that I will discuss come from samples collected in three different campaigns um, that, successfully, that successfully considered different locations from spatially concentrated samples in the center of the city to sites that distant 25 kilometers apart uh, in, in, the, uh, in the inner part of the city. Uh, this aerial view shows the central part of the city of Buenos Aires, which is located on the southern shore of the La Plata River, uh, which is a fume which has a fume, fume shape of about 33 three kilometers in length oriented from northwest to southeast, and it, it is extended on a vast plain. Uh, and Buenos Aires is the third megacity of Latin America with a population of about 13, no, 16 millions. This uh, micrograph, oh, let me see here shows uh, the, an overall picture of Buenos Aires aerosol. We can observe agglomerates, uh, agglomerate of micro, um, microspherical carbonaceous particles, a sea salt crystal here, and mineral dust and larger s s sphere, most likely from a combustion sources. I will briefly describe the three campaigns in which we collected the armor particulate matter in the metropolitan area of Buenos Aires. The first campaign uh, consisted on two sampling periods, one in winter and the other in summer. In each season, we collected a total of 17, 24 PM10 samples in T sampling sites, 10 sampling sites located in the center of the city of Buenos Aires. In these samples, we determine the concentration of 17 metals and metalloids, this one. In the second campaign, uh, we collected a total of uh, 113 cores from PM2.5 to PM10 and the same quantity of fine PM2.5 particles. We move our interest from the urban site to a suburban site uh, located in um, close to the ring road delimited the city of Buenos Aires, that is this. Um, and okay. On the third campaign, we conducted to assess uh, the level of tw 12 chemical elements, five ions, and carbon black in PM 2.5 samples collected in Buenos Aires along a 25 kilometer transect, including three points. That is this. Three monitoring sites were located, one on the coast of the La Plata River, another one in the geographical center of the city of Buenos Aires, and the third one in the peri-urban area. In this opportunity, we collected 400 samples. Uh, I'll try to summarize the main features of our assessment of the urban aerosol in our city. Uh, this semi-log plot provides an overall view of the multi-elemental profile of the urban PM2.5, PM10, side divided in major, minor, uh, and ultra trace, trace and ultra trace according to their concentration level. Concentration levels expand seven orders of magnitude from microgram per cubic meters, sulfur and geographical elements, aluminum, calcium, and iron, to picograms per cubic meters for platinum and rhodium. Here. <coughs> uh, 
from this assessment and other complementary studies that uh, which includes emission inventories and the chemical spatial patterns of the Buenos Aires road dust we have been able to identify a number of potential sources contributing to PM10 through key chemical markers from from geographical origin aluminum and magnesium uh, construction demolition activities uh, calcium, magnesium, uh, from vehicle wear particles for brake dust. We have two types of sources, uh, brake dust, that is this one, arsenic, copper, magnes, molybdenum, and especially antimo antimony. For, from pneumatic wear particles, sulfur and zinc, and from vehicle exhaust, arsenic, manganese, lead, sulfur, and zinc. Interestingly, from, for lead, we noted that its PM10 level in Buenos Aires are significantly similar to from diesel exhaust, considering that diesel vehicles are the main sources of particles from vehicle exhaust in Buenos Aires. We postulate that the present levels of lead in PM10 in Buenos Aires are largely uh, related to the levels of this metal as a natural component of diesel oil. Okay, this slide showed a quick way to evaluate a spatial and temporal variability of the determined PM10 profiles using a coefficient of diversion, COD, defined here. Uh, we consider five sets of elements for COD calculation. Uh, first, all measurement elements, that is this one, uh, geological elements, most abundant elements, that are geological and sulfur elements, uh, trace elements. Uh, in general, the COD values indicate a rather homogeneous spatial pattern, particularly for the most abundant elements that are more evenly distributed over the sampling region. For this sampling campaign, we extended the usage of COD for compare day-by-day -day variation along the different monitoring sites. Day-by-day, COD showed consistently higher values than those corresponding to side-by-side -side CODs. This confirmed that daily variation of PM10 chemical composition were more important than the variation of its spatial distributions. Based on the result of spatial and temporal variability, we decided to collect samples during a more extended campaign in time, but only in one site, to obtain a better assessment of temporal variability. In this campaign, we obtained fine PM 2.5, um, okay, fine 2 input on 5, and coarse samples. We determined the concentration of 13 chemical elements in the samples. Um, in the f so, sorry, in the soluble and residual fraction of the collected particulate matter, for four irons in the soluble fraction and black carbon by reflectometry. In this presentation, we will focus on few aspects of our result, namely mass concentration, sea salt presence, and black carbon. Okay. Our sampling site was located about uh, 250 kilometers from the open sea and about 8 kilometers from the shore of La Plata River, which flows from uh, into the Atlantic Ocean. The limit between the La Plata River and the Atlantic Ocean uh, has been defined as the line between Punta del Este and Cabo San Antonio. The story is subject to atmospheric forcing because it, of its large extension and shallow water deep. Oceanographic, st oceanographic studies sh have characterized the seasonal influence of wind pattern on salinity distribution on the river's surface, shown here in yellow numbers, ranging from 5 to 35 salinity units, with spring summer dominated by onshore winds. Uh, and, fall, um, and fall and winter characterized by a balance between onshore and offshore winds. 
We have used these two sets of wind direction to differentiate contribution patterns of inland and coastal coast sources. Furthermore, we have divided the set of onshore and offshore winds direction in two, according to the central value of wind speed distribution, which during the sample period was about four meters per second. Okay, the t this table summarizes our results on the variability in levels of mass concentrations of fine and coarse particles, black carbon in fine and coarse particles, and sea salt markers uh, in coarse particles. Relatively high levels um, of mass black carbon concentration were registered and under low, uh, low wind speed and vice versa. Black carbon concentration do not seem to be much affected by wind directions, you can see there. Um, while mass concentration are statistically higher under offshore low spin winds and lower under offshore wind with high speed winds. With the last feature, typically, typically, this last feature typically occurs under south westerly winds. A fact that for mass concentration confirmed, the people are saying in Buenos Aires the south westerly winds clean the air. Seasonal markets in PM 2.510 exhibit a completely different pattern that I will show as following. Okay. We have plotted in this uh, slide the percentage, the percentile distribution of the ratio of CISOL markers, markers um, and, uh, relative to the mass concentration in coarse particles. The blue curve depicts the overall distribution of the resulting values from the more than 100 sample analyzed. The green curve shows the samples taken under prevalent onshore wind condition while the orange curves correspond to samples collected under prevalent offshore wind conditions. Darker markers correspond to higher winds, this one, and lighter correspond to lower wind speeds. The percentage distribution of the dark green curve, this, um, under prevalent higher speed of onshore winds is clearly differentiated from the rest of the distribution, including the overall one. It, in this case, the highest occurrence of relatively high sea salt concentration to, uh, throughout the whole distribution. The distribution under offshore winds and lower wind speeds indicates the highest occurrence of lower values. This one. This distribution for the other two parameter combination is closer to the overall distribution and in general below it. This analysis helps to identify the condition under which relatively high sea salt concentration may be expected in the urban atmosphere of Buenos Aires. The ratio, this, uh, this variable, the ratio between sea salt market and mass concentration of aerosol resulted a sensitive indicator because it encompasses and expressed the opposite behavior of concentration of PM and sea salt tracers with wind speed. We show here a scatter plot of the measured concentration of chloride versus sodium compared with the corresponding ratio documented for seawater. The best feast of, of the measured data of, for the chloride sodium pair correspond to the a quadratic function, this one. This quadratic function approximation becomes at low concentration practically tangent to the uh, chloride ratio in seawater for sodium concentration higher than. 0.5 in this part, uh, micrograms per cubic meter. Chloride concentrations are on average lower than the corresponding value in seawater. Sea this difference, this last feature indicates that existence of significant chloride depletion in the measured data noticeable on the only under onshore winds. Mm, this situation. Gaseous chlorine species releases as a consequence of the detected chlorine depletion in the Buenos Aires aerosol may affect the ozone production and destruction cycle of this large urban area where nitrogen oxides and aerosol chloride sources coexist. We have also extracted the principal component for the subset of determined concentrations organized according to wind speed and wind directions. The subset of high speed offshore winds was discarded. Ah, yeah. This one. 
um, because um, of the relatively low mass collected for a high number of samples. However, we highlight that ammonium sulfate was identified um, uh, was identified under high speed onshore winds. The pair ammonium antimony black carbon under low speed uh, onshore winds and black carbon alone under low speed offshore winds. This one. For, uh, this one. For quartz particles, it is noticeable that the pair sodium chloride and antimony black carbon has been identified under all wind conditions. All this. This first pair is associated with the discussed oceanic um, uh, influence of Buenos Aires City. I will go quickly. This is the first uh, study in, in which we assess uh, PM 2.5 in, in 400 uh, samples during 18 months. Let me go directly here. We have assessed the influence of meteorological condition by means of the potential source contribution function that represent a quantification of the potential of a source area to coerce a certain level of aerosol concentration at a specific receptor site. We have assessed so far the regional contribution of the determined cation, sodium, potassium, and ammonium. After having organized the samples in four sets according to their quartile distribution, we calculated the potential set contribution function for each set of samples belonging to a, specific, a specified quartile. For, for example, this is the, this function for the lowest sodium concentration determined in the samples collected at coastal site. Uh, and the other provide evidence, and, and the, well, the other is the fourth quartile. This is the lower, and this is the fourth quartile. These two functions provide evidence that marine aerosols in PM 2.5 from the South Atlantic reach really to the coastal site. Um, for for sodium, the lowest concentration values is clearly dominated by continental back trajectory with a noticeable presence of those from north-northeast direction. On the other hand, the function belonging to the highest sodium concentration value exhibits almost exclusively the influence of oceanic back trajectory. Um, here you see the three monitoring sites the three monitoring sites, and in all of them, the oceanic influence is, has been registered, not only at the coastal site. Um, the potassium ion has been identified as a, a chemical biomass burning. This slide shows an example of a biomass burning situation which occurred during the sampling period. The 24-hour samples collected during the episode belong to those with potas potassium concentration in the fourth quartile. Mm. This is the fourth quartile. Let me go to the end. And finally, in summary, this study showed us, it allowed us to identify the oceanic influence in the Buenos Aires aerosol, not only in the coars, but also in the PM 2.5 and in sites away from the shore of the La Plata River, confirming that black carbon levels are significantly related to vehicle exhaust and wind speed also in levels, postulating that an increasing PM 2.5 concentration profile from the river's shore towards inland, an increasing black carbon concentration profile from the river shore to the urban site and similar levels in urban and pre-urban urban sites, and an opposite profiles of sodium and potassium decreasing from the shore to inland for sodium and vice versa for potassium. And finally, a relatively even pattern for ammonium concentration. Thank you.